Hello from Eastern CCTV. This is the IP camera OSD config menu. In this video, we will be going over the network config and advanced config. Under network port config, we can change our HTTP ports and our data ports. Our RTSP port is also listed here, but it can only be changed from the RTSP function menu. Under IP address, we can change the camera to obtain an IP address automatically or we can make it a static IP address. We also have our DNS server option and PPOE config. For the most part, you will not need to use PPOE config unless you have a service provider that requires it. Under server config, we can make the IP camera point to an NVMS 1000 client and what that does is when the client and the camera are both online, the camera will request to connect to the NVMS 1000 client. To be able to use that, you do have to port forward your computer and you do have to set up a server port. Under IP Notify, we can make it so an email address receives a notification when the IP address of the camera changes and we can also log it onto an FTP server. Under our DDNS config option, we can set the DDNS server type if we have a IP camera that's port forwarded and using a dynamic IP address. If you do want to use the easterndns.com service, you are going to want to change it to Mint DNS. Under server address, you will fill out www.easterndns.com and the rest will be filled out as normal with your username, password, and domain. Under RTSP, we can enable the RTSP function as well as change the port number. And as you see on the bottom, we can enable anonymous login to allow people to log into the RTSP address without requiring a password or username. Under UPnP, we can have the camera attempt to port forward itself. Keep in mind, most routers by default do not come with UPnP enabled. So if you want to use this function, you will have to enable it first. Under mail config, we can set up an email address to be linked to the IP camera and this will allow us to send our motion detection triggers and our alarm input triggers to that email address. Under FTP setting, we can connect to an FTP server and have it send our motion detection triggers and our alarm input triggers to that FTP server. Under user config, we can add user accounts for the IP camera logins can have normal users, advanced users, and admin users. We can also bind MAC addresses to those accounts, so when that account logs in, it has to be from a certain device. Under security config, we can set up blacklists and whitelists for IP addresses as well as MAC addresses. Under config backup and restore, we have the option to import settings that we saved previously to the camera and our export setting option allows us to export configs. The load default button will factory reset the camera. Our reboot option will reboot the camera. And our upgrade option will upgrade the firmware of the camera. This was our IP camera OSD config. We went over the network config and the advanced config settings in this video. Thank you for watching.